welcome to Think Tech on Spectrum OC16, Hawaii's weekly newscast on things that matter to tech and to Hawaii. I'm Elise Anderson. And I'm Cynthia Sinclair. In our show this time, we'll review the most recent top five Think Tech talk shows and staff picks. We'll check out the elements of the best of the best and get a handle on the public issues and the guests involved. Think Tech produces more than 35 talk shows every week in our downtown high-tech green screen studio. Our Think Tech talk show offerings are very diverse, and their coverage is also very diverse, covering things you might never have otherwise known. Every week, Think Tech chooses its top five Think Tech talk shows from the week before based on the number of views each of them has had on the internet. For this past week, the winning shows were as follows. Number one, from the series Pinoy Power Hawaii, hosted by Emmy Ortega Anderson. It was called Pinoy Power Extravaganza, Pinoy Power, with guest Efren Extravaganza. Emmy had a conversation with entertainer Efren Extravaganza. Efren performed songs and comedy skits and shared how he was lucky to have come to Hawaii to live the American dream. Now he'll go back to the Philippines and live like a king. I like uh, singing, dancing, everything. So right. when I was young, my parents uh, brought me, buy me a harmonica uh, mm -hmm. at the age of uh, seven. And then I, I always liked to play harmonica when I was young. So, nang rogi ka, kumita ka dito eh. Yeah, ito ta, yeah. na, mm -hmm. ang buyo ko ay magkapsat, uh, may sak na Ilocano. Nag-iskela ko di Bakara National Comprehensive High School. Mm -hmm. uh, Nag-iskela ko di Nagilian Academy, di second year high school. Mm -hmm. Kita, ito nga, napaspasyar ko dito yung igwa. Ito yung Interopilipinas, lahat. Mm -hmm. Kaya mahilig ako, yung, ano, nabalog. Nabalog ako. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Likeable Science, hosted by Ethan Allen. It was called A Study of Current Scientific Research, Development, Deployment, and Prospects, Only on Likeable Science. But guest Leland Worden, tropical landscapes have been extensively degraded due to human activities. Fortunately, many of these landscapes are very resilient and have great potential to recover after major disturbances. Research ecology is a really enormous field, um, but the concept is that you're coming in and um, basically restoring an ecosystem that has been dam damaged, degraded, or destroyed. Mm -hmm. um, so the idea is to try to bring back function. Um, that can be species um, or also just ecosystem services of that ecosystem. Um, and specifically, I work on uh, tropical forest um, restoration um, in both wet and dry forests. One of the really cool things about restoration is that um, there's so many steps involved that you really have to take a holistic approach where you understand 
So how a seed germinates and whether or not that species is suitable for the soil type. And there's a lot of things, but it's true. It's, a, it's very complex, and, um, but really fun to work in because you get to do a lot of different things. Basically, the green um, segment is the protected area. And I worked in kind of the north um, or in the southwestern corner of that, there's a little anvil in the corner called Horizontes, which is the experimental forest. Um, and what's really incredible about this system is that um, about 80% of the forest has naturally regenerated after just removing some pressures such as um, unnatural grazers, as uh, cows, and that actually um, restricting um, non just naturally occurring fires. Where I work, a lot of that basically the pressures were agriculture. And mm -hmm. the reason that we're able to restore on a large scale there is because a lot of the um, production of agriculture products, which was mostly beef, has actually moved over to China. So that is a success story in the fact that we're able to now restore that land. But mm -hmm. there are a lot of places, um, even think about prairies in the Midwestern United States that have this tiny little area now because of agricultural pressures, but we don't really have the ability just because of human land use to restore those systems. Even in um, natural forests, you can think about actually harvesting of, of products, um, forest products such as collective harvesting of wood, and there's a lot of ways that we can actually sustainably use ecosystems mm -hmm. um, rather than just completely replacing them um, with for agricultural or other uses. Even though that is absolutely necessary um, to sustain our really incredibly skyrocketing uh, global population, um, but there are some ways such as agroforestry, where we could actually think about transitioning systems that were, are purely um, agricultural over to hybrids, where we do have um, forest products and ag as well. Right. Number three, from the series Lillian's Vegan World, hosted by Lillian Kumick. It was called Vim, Vigor, and Vegan, surviving and thriving on a plant-based diet with guest David Nichols. Contrary to what people think, those on a plant-based diet are just as energetic as omnivores, if not more. Lillian talks with David about how he became vegan and found the healthy diet he was in search of. Many famous vegan athletes thrive on a plant-based diet. I've been wanting to uh, have you on as a guest because your story is very interesting. I actually interviewed your partner a few mm. weeks ago on my show, nice. the lovely Ryuko Miura-san. Yeah. Uh, she was amazing and I was very interested to hear that you are also vegan yes. and on a plant-based diet. I would say 90, 90, about 98% vegan. So. Oh, okay. I can't say 100%, but uh -huh. I try to do watch what I eat. Tell us a little bit about your journey. Okay, so um, again, uh, when I met Ryuko, that's mm -hmm. how I met her. Um, I was uh, more vegetarian, um, and I switched. I used, you know, I... I was really overweight at one time. Um, genetics play a part of that with obesity. I mean, uh, the high blood pressure and uh, diabetes, because my mom has you know, um, high blood pressure and diabetes. But um, I was very unhealthy, um, blood pressure out of the roof, the sugar level going really high, borderline diabetes. And the doctor was like, okay, we're gonna give you all these meds. And I was like, I'm, I don't like taking a pill. So I asked him, is, is there any alternatives? He goes, yeah, watch your diet and get some exercise. One of the biggest or you know, main questions we get, where you get your protein from, so. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a really um, interesting fact because um, the beliefs that, we were, that I was instilled with is that you're gonna die if you don't eat animal flesh, mm -hmm. um, which is animals survive on, I know there's animals that survive like cows and, and horses, They're, Nice and healthy, and yes, they don't they eat herbivores. Right, yes. they don't eat even, their protein comes from what they eat. Yes, so yes. Why eat their protein when we can eat the same thing? So yeah, that kind directly of, from the source. And they're yeah. healthy, you know. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so Absolutely. um I started a vegetarian diet. My blood pressure started going down. I started exercising. Exercise mm -hmm. is a is a huge factor in it. Definitely, but it's mainly what you eat. I did come up with quite a few famous uh, vegan athletes. Mm -hmm that might surprise a few of the viewers. So mm -hmm. uh, one of them is Venus Williams. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So she adopted a raw vegan diet uh, after she was diagnosed with an autoimmune disease called Sjogren's uh, syndrome. Wow. She uh, adopted the raw, raw vegan diet, which mm -hmm. is a very, very strict diet, obviously meaning no cooked food. 
Okay, raw vegan. Raw right. vegan. Yeah. So she, yeah, she started her raw vegan diet in 2011 to relieve some of her symptoms. Number four, from the series Trump Week, hosted by Tim Apicella and co-hosted by me, Cynthia Sinclair. It was called Real Constitutional Crisis on Trump Week. We discussed Trump's orders to Don McGahn and William Barr, ordering them not to comply with subpoenas issued by Congress, and Trump's efforts to block congressional attempts to obtain his federal tax returns. The subpoena for Donald Trump Jr. to appear before the Senate Intelligence Committee has also been in the news. The administration's moves on China and Iran are likewise troubling. We discussed how Trump is dismantling our democracy and how, if at all, we can preserve it. Before we go down the points, know that Nancy Pelosi actually said it. She said, I believe we're in a constitutional crisis. Right. Now, Jerry Nadler, who's the chair of the Judicial Committee, he was the first one to say it. Okay, so what leads us to this, this point? What leads us to this statement? It's, it's a very dramatic statement. We've heard it before. You know, we heard right. it in 2000 when, um, you know, we had the hanging chads in Florida and it wasn't clear how right. this election was going to be resolved. And right. I, I distinctly remember the comments about we're in a constitutional crisis. They certainly said it when um, Richard Nixon didn't want to turn over the tapes and yet the, uh, he was being asked to do so. Uh, so we've heard it through history. We heard it during the Clinton uh, right. impeachment. But what makes this one a little more serious and different? There's foreign actors involved. At what point does executive privilege begin and stop? So we know that if you talk to the media, we know if you talk to friends, if we know if you talk to, you know, if you've been called in to testify and you testify about certain things, you have basically waived executive privilege. Right. Now, the legal team for Donald Trump says, no, that's not the case. Well, they say, no, that's not the case everything. for everything, which well, is how we got to this crisis. That's, <laughs> yes, right? that's how we got here. I that's mean, how we got you here. can come up with the absurd, you know, minute reason why something, I won't answer a subpoena or we won't, we won't supply right. someone to testify in front of the, the committees. And as bizarre as they are, um, they still have to be challenged. They're just stalling for time, is my thought, because the more they can stall, the closer we get to 2020, and, and the more likely people are not going to be swayed against him unless they see the evidence that's there. Not only did we have the 800 signatures from DOJ, right? Okay, we also have a Republican who is in a fairly, very, very important part of the Senate, right? and he's a Republican, and he said, no. We are going to hold Donald Trump Jr. accountable right. to the statements he made before before this committee versus what we've found to be in the Mueller report. Right. Exactly. Okay. And he is taking flack for it. 
Yeah, and I'm oh, sure yes, I, he is. I can imagine just how many calls and how many people are bumping into him in the, you know, the halls of the Senate and uh, really laying it to him. Right. But and this is where this is where, again, the crack in the vase right. is this, you know, further evidence that, you know, we've gone far enough. And I, I don't know so. what the answer is to that. I don't either, but I can just hope. Right. That's all yeah. we can do is yeah. hope. Number five from the series Hawaii State of Clean Energy, hosted by Jay Fidel and co-hosted by Maria Tomei. It was called How Energy Has Done in the 2019 Legislative Session with guests Kurt Sue. Jay and Maria talked with Kurt about energy policy and the energy bills and resolutions of the 2019 session. Yes, we need to focus on and follow energy in every session. We're trying to partner with a lot of emergency management agencies when, and, and elected officials when they host their, their um, preparedness fairs. We want to be a part of that conversation, and I'm sure you've seen the, the handbook that we've collaborated on with our partners in putting together to get people to, um, ready for hurricane season and all the other associated events, right? And so that, that's an uh, important part of the conversation as well, is, is not only clean energy and sustainability, but also resilience and, and in preparedness. But I, I do I think that there are, I think interest is growing. People want to be part of the conversation and whether it's uh, rooftop solar, electric vehicles, lots of questions and opportunities. And as we're rolling out new programs within the company, that, that's a perfect opportunity to meet up with that interest and to talk story and to get to share information. Yeah. You know, a lot, of, uh, a lot of us get those inserts in our bill, the ho'okui, and then that contains a lot of useful information as well. I know with, with, I'm guilty myself sometimes of, of getting, you know, the mail and not reading everything as carefully as we, I, I should, but, you know, that there's a lot of uh, good information in there. And even for the traditionalists who, who look forward to our, our recipes, that's also a, a piece that's built in in there as well. <laughs> of course. <laughs> What else? <laughs> so what are some of the things recently that people have been asking about? Well, roof, rooftop solar continues to be, uh, you know, we're, we're getting a lot of calls about, particularly a lot of projects, you know, when, when people see things in their community, they want, they want to know what's going on. And more recently, you know, we've, we have, um, you know, we're, we're, uh, the renewable uh, request for proposals. So we have developers now going into communities. And so people have questions about, you know, what, what's happening and why. and um, you know, so those are the types of questions that, that we, we receive. And even at the, the neighborhood board level, whenever they see trucks in the neighborhood, sometimes they'll call, wait, what's going on? You know, what's Hawaii Electric doing in my neighborhood? And so the guys who run the trucks are perfectly happy to answer your <laughs> questions too, aren't they? And they, they I do, do ask great, them questions. Oh, they, you do. Do, <laughs> they do great work. And, and so that's the part where we, we really want to um, share that information. And it, it goes back to what we were talking about earlier with regards to resilience and sustainability. All, all of these initiatives are really going towards those purposes where we're trying to harden the grid, uh, make, 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 make uh, the grid more reliable, and, so, and that which leads to better service for all of us who use energy. And, you know, we're also working towards the 100% renewable goal and trying to integrate more renewable energy. And our staff pick. From the series Taking Your Health Back, hosted by Wendy Lowe, it was called From Fast Food to Smart Food, You Are What You Eat, with guest Christy Nick. Christy shared her health journey. Taking Your Health Back is made simple, one step at a time. Why is this topic so important to you? Well, because I've been on the spectrum from fast food to smart food, and as I started to learn how important it was to eat more fruits and vegetables, I learned a statistic. There's like some statistics that just always stick with you, and mm -hmm. this one just kind of, it hit me. Um, Dr. David Katz said this may be the first generation of children to have a shorter life expectancy than their parents. Right. One other statistic, um, you've probably heard it from Dr. Sears. Um, I know you study a lot of what he, he teaches. Yes. He says that 75% of all chronic disease is preventable. 75%. Yes. So if we have that ability to change, like I look at it as if I had a lottery ticket and I was like, here is the lottery ticket. You have a 75% chance of winning. Right. You would buy the lottery ticket. Right. We need to take that same approach with our health. We mm -hmm. have such a great ability to be able to shift our habits that this can make a really big impact. Um, and I, I couldn't have done it without being around a circle of people who cared more about my health than I did at one time. And now I just want to be able to pay it forward. I can't even tell you the amount of friends I've gained because of one simple change that mm -hmm. I've made along the way. And 
you know, they always say you're the average of the five people that you hang out with now. Mm -hmm. And I just, I feel like I've really leveled up. <laughs> so um, it's, it's been really impactful to be around a lot of great people that have impacted my life. And Patton and I were awful. We would wake up and have like <laughs> Snicker bars for breakfast. And we just didn't think about how bad things could be. And my friends titled me as Mick Christie because I would go through the drive through at McDonald's. I mean, I ate what I could afford, which was total junk. That's all I ate was junk. Um, I had McDonald's twice a day, every single day. And everything else, if I did make something, it was like, I ate like a frat boy. It was macaroni and cheese, cheeseburgers, <laughs> grilled cheese, like just anything that was beige with no girl. color. I was a frat girl. <laughs> well, here in Hawaii, we call that the local diet. Okay. And you know, like I can totally relate to you because, and that's why this is so encouraging for everyone watching this because frat boy here, frat girl here, our local chick, I mean, the worst diet. We lived on fast food. So much as mindset. You know, there's this, there's this pattern that we tend to get into. And for whatever reason, I didn't get into a pattern at a young age about having a belief about a certain thing, maybe mm -hmm. about food or about my body. And then you have these thoughts that create that. And then it just keeps going into like this cycle of, you know, your actions then support the beliefs. And I thankfully, whatever it was, maybe it was my mother. I don't know, but I just never had that bad relationship with food. What I would really like you to take away from today's discussion is the idea that food really is medicine. You've heard that before, that food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food. So simple changes will have massive effects on your overall well-being. You can always find the links to these shows in our daily email advisories. If you don't already get our daily email advisories, you can sign up to get them on thinktechhawaii.com. These are only samplings from the top five and the staff pick from across our 35 weekly talk shows. There are, of course, many more. To see these top five shows and staff pick shows in their entirety, go to thinktechhawaii.com or youtube.com slash thinktechhawaii. Great diversity, great community, great content at ThinkTech. If you have questions or comments about these or any of our shows, please let us know. And yes, it's okay to share them with your friends and colleagues. Thanks so much for watching our shows and for supporting our efforts at ThinkTech. And now let's check out our ThinkTech schedule of events going forward. ThinkTech broadcasts its talk shows live on the internet from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. on weekdays. Then we broadcast our earlier shows all night long and on the weekends. And some people listen to them all night long and on the weekends. If you missed a show 
or if you want to replay or share any of our shows, they're all archived on demand on thinktechhawaii.com and YouTube. For our audio stream, go to thinktechhawaii.com slash audio, and we post all our shows as podcasts on iTunes. Visit thinktechhawaii.com for our weekly calendar and live stream and YouTube links, or better yet, Sign up on our email list and get our daily email advisory. Think Tech has a high-tech green screen studio at Pioneer Plaza. If you want to see it or be part of our live audience, or if you want to participate in our shows, contact shows at thinktechhawaii.com. If you want to pose a question or make a comment during a show, call 808-374-2014 and help us raise public awareness on Think Tech. Go ahead, give us a thumbs up on YouTube or send us a tweet at thinktechhi. We'd like to know how you feel about the issues and events that affect our lives in these islands and in this country. We want to stay in touch with you, and we'd like you to stay in touch with us. Let's think together. We'll be right back to wrap up this week's edition of Think Tech. But first, we want to thank our underwriters. Okay, Cynthia, that wraps up this week's edition of Think Tech. Remember, you can watch Think Tech on Spectrum OC16 several times every week. Can't get enough of it, just like Cynthia does. For additional times, check out OC16.tv. For lots more Think Tech videos and for underwriting and sponsorship opportunities on Think Tech, visit thinktechhawaii.com. Be a guest or a host, a producer or an intern, and help us reach and have an impact on Hawaii. Thanks so much for being part of our Think Tech family and for supporting our open discussion of tech, energy, diversification, and global awareness in Hawaii, and of course the ongoing search for innovation wherever we can find it. You can watch this show throughout the week and tune in next Sunday evening for our next important Think Tech episode. I'm Elise Anderson. And I'm Cynthia Sinclair. Aloha, everyone. Mm -hmm.